This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Let's go through and complete the chapter by looking at how we calculate the exchange gains or losses that arise on translation of an overseas subsidiary. The way in which we're going to go through and look at how these gains or losses arise is by going back to the first fundamental principles of accounting. So what you would have seen in the very first session when you looked at F3. And that's going back to the accounting equation. So if we write down the accounting equation, so steering away from what's in your notes at the moment in time, opening net assets plus profit is equal to your closing net assets, isn't it? Now, if we look at an overseas currency, so being consistent with the overseas currency that we saw in the, the previous questions, if we look at dinars, let's just make up some numbers. Opening 29, oh, sorry, 21. Profit of 29 gives me closing there, is it of 50? Okay. In the overseas currency, that's all fine, isn't it? However, we then need to translate that functional currency of the subsidiary into the presentation currency of the group. And that's where the issues arise. Because the opening net assets are going to be at the opening rate, which essentially is last year's closing rate. The profit is going to be translated at the average rate. And the closing net assets will be at the closing rate, won't they? Okay. Now, if all those exchange rates stay the same, we have no issue whatsoever. However, that is very unlikely to happen. So let's just say that, that we have, is it three dinars to the dollar as the opening rate? Uh, let's just say that, that there are three and a half dinars to the dollar as the average rate. And then the closing rate as my dinars to the dollar is four to the dollar. Okay. Uh, what we've got there, if we then translate that into dollars, that's where we can see our problem arising. So 21 divided by 3, does that give me 7? Uh, 29 divided by 3.5, does that give me 8.3, shall we say? And 50 divided by 4, uh, 50 divided by 4 gives me there, is it, as 12.5. Okay, haven't done anything wrong. Uh, I've just gone through and used the rates that were in place to translate the opening, the closing net assets and the profit. Uh oh, we've got a bit of a problem, haven't we? Because if we take 7 plus 8.3, that does not equal 12.5, does it? Okay, uh, if we add the 7 and the 8.3, uh, does that give me 15? Point three, and um, what we have consolidated is twelve point five, isn't it? The closing net assets—that's what they are shown as on the SFP, aren't they? On a line by line basis, that will be contained within the assets within the liabilities of the group, won't it? But based on the accounting equation, it should be fifteen point three, and it isn't. So we need to get it from the fifteen point three to the twelve point five. So what we have there is that we have a loss and that loss is there is it as 2.8 million dollars. It is a loss on translation of the assets and liabilities of the overseas subsidiary. So there's a big 2.8 million dollar loss that we need to throw in to our financial statements. Uh, whereabouts does that loss go through and appear? Uh, well, it's not recognised. Essentially, we hide it away and we hide it there within other comprehensive income. OK, yeah, that loss it is shown at the bottom of your statement of profit or loss and OCI. I wouldn't worry for now whereabout it is contained within your statement of financial position. It, it, it's within all of the workings it's, it's hidden away okay this is just a separate way of calculating it we've actually already taken account of it 
without even thinking about it. However, the only issue that we've got to consider as well is that that is a loss of 2.8 million on the net assets. However, those net assets do not include goodwill, do they? So we also need to combine with that 2.8 million loss on the net assets, the exchange gain or loss on the goodwill. So in order to go through and do that, what we do is we put in a separate pro forma. Okay, We lay it out ever so slightly differently to the way in which we've demonstrated how the exchange gains and losses arise there. And I just want you to appreciate that what we've done in the illustration shows where the gains and losses come from. Okay, The way in which we calculate them is using the pro forma here. Okay, So what we go through and do there is we look at the opening net assets. And the opening net assets were at the opening rate. They are now at the closing rate. And you can work out the gain or loss there. Uh, you then take your profit for the year. So we've consolidated that in profit or loss at the average rate. We need to translate it then at the closing rate, don't we? So that's the opening net assets. That's the profit for the year dealt with. Effectively, that's taking account of those figures that we see up there, isn't it? And then what we need to do there is we need to look at the goodwill. So the goodwill calculation usually comes from working three. The goodwill would have been there at the start of the year. So we need to translate that at the opening rate. And then we need to go through there and translate that at the closing rate. OK, uh, once you've got the difference, you can then see that it's a gain or loss. You can then total up the total translation gain or loss on translation of the overseas subsidiary. And then that is shown in other comprehensive income. So you only need to calculate this exchange gain or loss if it categorically says within the question to calculate the exchange gain or loss on translation of the overseas subsidiary, or it is asking you to prepare the group statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. So, so do just be aware of the scenarios when you need to go through and calculate it. OK, excellent. There we have it. Uh, what we'll go through and do is we'll just play around with it uh, by using the example. Uh, it says, continuing from the previous example, uh, calculate the gain or loss on translation of the overseas subsidiary. Uh, from what we've seen, was it in that previous example? Was it there to do with Holly and Ivy? So what we'll go through and do is we'll lay out our pro forma first. So we've got there, is it the opening net assets? And those opening net assets are going to be there, aren't they? At the opening rate and at the closing rate. We want the profit for the year. Be careful because that's at the average rate and the closing rate. That's the one that's slightly different. And then you've got your goodwill. Your goodwill is an asset. So would have previously been at the opening rate and is now there at the closing rate. OK, uh, just let me move that all up ever so slightly. So I have a little bit more room put in the figures okay excellent there we go so right let's go through uh, i have the information from the previous example uh to hand uh, remember i think you've got the uh, the subsidiary was acquired at the start of the year wasn't it i think if you go back the acquisition date was the first of the first 2015 uh, and the year end the reporting date was the 31st of december 2015 so what you've got there is here the acquisition net assets are also the opening net assets and they are there at 600. So my opening net assets are there, is it at 600? Uh, we need to go through there and look at what the opening rate was and what the closing rate was. Uh, the closing rate, I think, was it 4.3, wasn't it? Uh, and the opening rate if memory serves me right was there was it as 
3.8, wasn't it? Okay. So what we've got there is 600 at 3.8 is there as 157.9. And 600 at 4.3 is 139.5. So the opening net assets were at 157.9. They are now at 139.5. So you have a loss of 18.4. Okay. There we go. Because there is a reduction in the opening net assets due to the changes in the exchange rates. Uh, the profit for the year is where we need to go back to the statement of profit or loss. So if we look at the statement of profit or loss and total up, is it S's column in the overseas currency? Uh, 1664 less 1288 less 156 less 40 less 36 gives me 144. Okay, so there that 144 are S's profits. That's S's profit before any translation. Uh, so we translated them at the average rate, which was there as 4. The closing rate is there at 4.3, isn't it? Again, it's over to yourselves in terms of the calculator now. Uh, 144 at 4 gave me 36 exactly, wasn't it? Does that then give me 33.5? Again, the profit has been reduced when we consolidate it because of the changes in the exchange rate. So again, you have a reduction in the profit. A reduction in profit is an exchange loss, isn't it? And that's the 2.5. million dollars isn't it okay uh the goodwill you need to go back to is it working number three uh, which is what we've done quite a while back now but working number three the goodwill that you calculated in the overseas currency is there at 280 so the opening rate was 3.8 the closing rate is 4.3 isn't it so 280 divided by 3.8 gives me there as 73.7 280 divided by 4.3 is there as 65.1 again what you have there if you look at the adjustment uh, there is a reduction in the goodwill, so the reduction in an asset, a reduction in an asset gives rise, doesn't it, to a loss. That loss is there as 8.6. So 18.4 plus 2.5 plus 8.6. Is there as a total loss of 29.5? That total loss figure of 29.5, where would it appear? Well, that would go there, wouldn't it? Within your other comprehensive income. Okay, there we go. Uh, if you're curious as to where that appears within the statement of financial position, well, we said before that it's sort of hidden away within the numbers. Well, if we go through there and have a look at working number five, that loss it is somewhere hidden within the post acquisition reserves and that loss that we had on translation of the investment. OK, I think we said when we went through that example earlier on uh, that it is just a shortcut, isn't it? So we've just used a shortcut method so that we don't have to go through there and work out that gain or loss on translation of the overseas subsidiary there, unless it specifically asks us to do so. 
for it specifically says work out the group statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income because that goes with another comprehensive income we would need to calculate the exchange gain or loss arising on translation of the overseas subsidiary there we go uh, practice those questions work them through again uh, have a look at some of the examples that you've got within your tuition providers revision kit because I think that's important to work those as well other than that, that's it with regards to your groups and your overseas consolidation. I'll see you next when we start to look at your group statements of cash flows.